else are we going to do in this class? We are going to practice with writing groups. I just want to give them a gift star. Writing groups. <laughs> it's important, but it's not the most important thing in the class. Um, I like the writing groups. It makes my workload for a given week more manageable. Um, it allows me to meet with you guys one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in some courses that I've done, I did as a, as a student, you know, we have these big 15 or 20 person, um, you know, sessions where you submit a, a story and everyone talks about it. And I felt like those really ground to, into a useless place very quickly. Because, you know, a few people would say the important things and then everyone else would just like start picking apart sentences or whatnot. <clears throat> so I like splitting into smaller writing groups. How, what, what numbers did you write or you're not writing groups? How many people are in them? There are four or five. Um, so we have six writing groups. Is that, is that right? <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good number. So I can sit in your writing group with you, four or five of you, um, and <clears throat> I will meet with your writing group twice in that case. Um, and if I don't get to you twice because of the, the being on tour, um, I'll have to look at the numbers. I may want to take one of those writing groups and break it apart. And, um, and make us into five writing groups instead, um, just so I can make sure I can get to each of you twice. Uh, with the tour coming up next month, uh, things are gonna be just a tad tight for me. Uh, all of my March and April's open, but February is gonna be, gonna be pretty tight. So we'll look at that um, at the break, and uh, we might take one group and break it apart and put one person of each into the other groups. Yeah. Do writing groups meet today? We'll talk about that, yeah. Okay. Um, my goal is to, to have you meet today um, but I don't expect you to have submitted much, if anything at all. Um, really, today is just that we're going to make sure that everything's working um, and, and whatnot. So, um, writing groups. Let's talk about writing groups. I promised you I would, um, and now is the time. So, uh, writing group. We may go extra long on the lecture today uh, because I skipped the lecture last week. Uh, and I want you guys to get your uh, money's worth more in many cases, your parents' money's worth, or in other cases, the government's money worth, money's worth. <laughs> um, uh, so, um, <coughs> writing groups. A good writing group is a wonderful thing for a lot of writers, and a terrible thing for some writers, even a good one. A bad writing group is a bad thing for all writers. So let's talk about how to do it well. The idea is for you to learn how to give and receive criticism in a way that improves your writing. Because having a good support structure can really help you keep these good habits. Some of you may have found in taking creative writing classes already that submitting stuff to a creative writing class every week keeps you writing and gives you a deadline. And that's good for some writers. Um, other times when you don't have the class, you don't have that impulse to submit. If you have a writing group, that you have formed, you don't have to keep the one in this class, but you know, if you, you can practice in this class and learn how to make one, um, then you have a deadline every week. You have a piece to submit, and you'd better get it done, otherwise everyone's gonna make fun of you. Um, which was my solemn duty in the writing group, since I was never late. Uh, well, I was always late, but I, would, I always had something. Um, so, I have found that my writing group has helped me and elevated me as a writer all through my career. It helps me find some of the things in the writing that I need to work on, um, but it also has given me that support structure. It's no coincidence that um, three of the um, members of my writing group, the founding members of my writing group, are professional writers. Um, that's, that happens. J.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis were in a writing group together. When a writing group really takes off, they lift each other up, give each other opportunities, and um, we start finding more success because you get to see people being successful. Uh, my writing group includes, includes Dan Wells. Dan Wells and I took this class along with a woman named Kaylin Zobel, who are the three writers in that class, and Peter, who became a professional editor at Tokyo Pop Editing Manga before I hired him away to make him my assistant. So I know there's four people in that writing group who became professionals in science fiction and fantasy in their chosen field. Peter always wanted to be an editor. Uh, so of that writing group that we started, there were, there were about oh, six of us um, in the er early years of the writing group. Uh, two of them are computer dudes. You know, you gotta, you gotta accept that they're computer dudes. That, you know, they're, they're our buddies. We still let them sit in the writing group, but you know. Um, <laughs> but 
But they write code. <laughs> they write code, exactly. They write code. And they are, they're actually good friends. We find that, uh, that good critiquers whose work writing you don't have to read can be actually a very valuable thing in a writing group. Uh, because a good writing group is going to have a number of submissions every week. Usually we find that two or three, in this class you'll have five, but usually we find two or three is ideal. And so having a writing group of eight members where two or three of you submit significant chunks every other week and then eight, the rest of them are just really insightful readers makes for a stronger writing group than only writers. That's what I've found. Uh, gives you a little more bang for your proverbial buck uh, by having some good re readers uh, there. And so perhaps some of you have spouses that you find have a good eye for reading. You can stick them in the writing group um, and uh, take advantage of them. Hi, bye-bye. Hope you had a fun time. Yes. <laughs> so, in your writing groups, I want you to submit, in case this wasn't made clear, 1,000 words every week. That's not a very large chunk, okay? It's actually quite small, and in fact, your writing group is more than welcome to make some changes to this. This is what the class requires. Um, did Emily split you up by hardcore how hardcore you are? I, I look to bring this up later, but I yeah. think there's going to be a certain amount of shifting that will have to take place. We can go ahead and shift around the writing groups. Yeah, she had a split up between like those that wanted to audit or those that were like the 15. Oh, the 15. Yeah, she didn't know what was going to happen to that. We'll go ahead and rebuild the writing groups then, and that'll be okay. Um, if there are those of you who are hardcore and you want to bump up to 2,000 words a week, I would not suggest more than 2,000 words for a five-person writing group. Uh, that's 10,000 words of reading. That's fine. I mean, honestly, you can you can read 10,000 words. Um, by the way, you have to start thinking of word counts instead of pages. That's that's like you know over here on our little list of things to learn to look like a pro. P R O. Number one is you start start referring to word count. I don't know what anything pages is anymore. Who cares what pages are? Pages. You can make. You've learned this. When someone says make a 10-page essay. That can be anything you want it to be, right? Uh, word count is how the entire industry works, and it's no longer an estimate based on yada, yada, yada. It used to be an estimate like this number of words. It's just the Microsoft Word push the button. Um, <laughs> that's the word count. What Microsoft Word says your word count is. Start thinking in word count, start talking in word count. Don't talk in pages uh, to, to editors. You can talk in pages to readers, but to editors or to other writers, talk in word count. Uh, so, 10,000 words is a manageable amount. Um, my writing group, we do three submissions of around 4,000 or 3,000. It's, it's, it's very manageable, even with going through and reading in a detailed way and things like that. I wouldn't recommend much more than this. Another thing you could do in your writing group is you could alternate. You could say, um, these three are going to submit 2,000 words this week, and the next two are going to submit 2,000 words the next week. That's perfectly acceptable, too. Um, as long as you know, you're getting the average. Um, the trick is when I sit in on your class, you all, your writing group, you kind of have to tweak things, and I'll warn you a week before, and so that you can each submit a thousand words, um, so that I can, you know, that week you'll have to go to the other other stuff. So that can be kind of um, kind of problematic. Um, with the two thousand word one, I'll try to read on. I can't promise that I will. I'll read at least a thousand words. Um, for the, yeah, but if, if you're if you're you're thinking you're fairly hardcore, do that. Um, if you're thinking. Um, I'm already going to be overloaded by writing 30,000 words a semester and having 18 credit hours and double majoring in, you know, like economics and pre-med or something like that. Then you can go ahead and just do the thousand words and that's fine. Okay? This is just what the, what the minimum class is. Um, 2,000 words is a, is a better chunk to see, sink your teeth into. You're going to submit that every week. <clears throat> what you're going to do in submitting that every week, you're going to post it to the live journal. I know, I know, there's lots of you, but there's like this blackboard thing we could use, and we could just use email. Email's terrible because people always have excuses the email doesn't work. Um, I found that when I started making people post it to LiveJournal um, instead of emailing it, all of this, my computer didn't work excuses, all went away, magically, poof. Um, people's computers magically started working better um, <laughs> when they had to post it uh, because LiveJournal will timestamp it and things like that. Um, you're going to post that on Monday, um, okay? Is that what I say on there? Um, by midnight. By midnight. I'm really okay if you do it like at 2 a.m. or things like that. What I want it is it to be there to be read Tuesday morning 
so that people have time on their schedule to do the readings, okay? If you don't submit by then, then I've got to take away points because there's got to be some forcing mechanism to get you doing that early enough that the right, writer in, your, or in your, your group who wants to be reading that when it works for them um, can do so. And so they don't have to like complain to me or complain to you. Get it up there. Don't make this an issue. You should all get full points on this thing, okay? Because if you're writing 3,000 words a week, you'll be done with all the submissions you're going to need to make to your writing group by the end of the first month, right? Okay? So really, do the 3,000 words a week. Get ahead, all right? Write hard for a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks, and then you'll never lose a single point by submission-wise, because you can always have them up there Monday night, um, early Tuesday morning, because you've already got it done, okay? All right, so you're going to be submitting that every week. Yeah? Um, just a recommendation, like blog docs work really good, like we have co-authors all in the same blog, and then like, you can do the comments or whatever you want. Yes, they do work very well. Um, <coughs> maybe someday I will shift to something like that. Flat Journal is blogging, um, and you can make comments and things like that.